Welcome to another video on fundamental of electrical circuits. This time, what we're going to focus on is two key parameters that are used to describe all the relationships in a circuit. And those two basically are the current and the voltage. So though that's basically what our focus is going to be in this uh, video. Um, so what we want to do, we want to these these uh, we want to relate these parameters to something real that uh, physical phenomena that exist. Um, so if you look at it, if you so we're going to start with charge. Charge basically measures if you want to think about that, it measures how many electron how many electron charges are we dealing with. So typically we uh, we. Um, this, this show this as a Q, as a letter Q, poorly formed there. Uh, and what it basically says, it says how many charges uh, are, are there sitting there. I mean, this is not a rate of change or anything. It's the amount of charges you have. And is, a, is built on how many electrons there are. Electrons are negative charges. Electrons are pretty much what we use. Um, to activate things now electron has got a negative charge proton has a positive charge but the charge q is a measure of how many electrons we have uh, the si model if you remember from earlier one the international standards uh, of measurement we call this coulomb and we show it with the letter c and one coulomb of charge it basically represent uh, a quantity that is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons electron charge if you if you that's a good way uh, to think about it okay now that's a physical phenomenon uh, if you have the right equipment and right way of sure you can measure how many electrons you have add them all up and figure out how many coulomb you have of course um, these are very, very electron charges are relatively small, so we have to put a lot of them together before we can do something useful with them. That's why we use Coulomb as a as a measure. Now, we really in electrical circuit we really like to think about current I. I the unit is basically amp for I, and I measures the rate of change for uh, charge or Q. So, so in mathematics, of course, we conveniently have derivatives, which is a derivative of Q with respect to time, which basically tells us what is the rate of change of charge with respect to time, and that's a measure of current. So therefore, amp must be Coulomb per second. So that's one of the derived SI uh, units, which is Coulomb per second. That's correct. So how can we use that? Well, we can use that because um, someone could come up to us and say, well, uh, you, you have, for example, you have, um, um, let's use a different color. Uh, you have um, been given Q um, that, uh, let's, let's draw a plot just to get a message across. Let's say uh, that's Q, this is T. Of course, Q is measured with Coulomb and t is measured in seconds and uh, you are given a let's let's make it relatively simple let's say you're given a line and this is a line that goes through this thing and let's say um, the way this is you got 20 coulomb for every 10 seconds so that's uh, that's a line that represent q and of course we could go say okay I have this nice equation here that I can use. Um, so, and I have Q based on this line. We're gonna go back to our early days of algebra and lighter line. Our line uh, equation is gonna be rise over run. So it's gonna be 20 over 10 times T. And since it intercepts at point zero, the intercept is equal to zero. Great, so another, let's clean it a little bit off. So Q equation is equal to 2T, fine. So if they want I using that equation, I is simply gonna be uh, the derivative of 2t with respect to time, and that's a two, and that's an m. Perfect. The other way, since we know a derivative of q over t, that's basically the slope of anything, this is a simple line, 
we could have actually looked at this and said, oh, we know what a slope is. A slope is rise over run, so it's two, therefore I would be two. Now, if you got a more complex curve, you have to go through and do the equations. Now let's say they came and give you a little bit of a different problem. And this time in their problem, they are saying that we are giving you an I, and you know, your I happen to be 10 E to the 5 T. And we want you to find what Q is. Um, let's say Q, the amount of charge that has been collected for between time, let's say, 1 and 5 seconds. So how we do that? Well, that's, uh, we're going to go back and uh, uh, take a look at, um, um, take a look at uh, that equation, I equal dQ over TT. But in this particular case, I is given, we're trying to find Q. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that if to get rid of the derivative, all we have to do is integrate both sides. So all that's going to happen is going to be Q is going to be an integral from starting time to an ending time of i d t okay so that's okay so we can do this and in this particular case that would be an integral going from 1 to 5 second of 10 e to the 5 t at this point it's pretty straightforward you take an integral of it and you're done great now we know the relationship from the physical electron to i how about the, from a physical phenomena to voltage? Voltage is an important one, and voltage equation is a little bit different. It, it kind of, in math, we always have our horizontal axis be time, and the V is actually going to throw us off a little bit because it's going to give us that is the derivative of slope. It's a rate of change of E, not with respect to time. This is really important a point of confusion, is with respect to Q. Um, so that's a volt. So so that would be joules per coulomb. But we kind of get tired of calling it joule, so we can't really refer to it as volts. So volts is really joules per coulomb. That's fine. Now we could do more or less the same process we went before. Someone could come and give you an e that is equal to fifty q squared e to the twenty t, and say, okay, find me. A, um, find me the voltage in this particular case and you say oh that so so now the question is if I'm going to take if find a voltage voltage is going to be a derivative of 50 Q squared E to the 20 T with respect to Q now the tricky part of this and where a lot of people a lot of people who are new to this gets a little bit confused has to do with the fact that um, this quantity is a constant with respect to Q and this quantity is a constant with respect to Q which means when you take a derivative of it they're just constant they're just going to move out so you're going to have 50 e to the 20 t and the only thing you have to take a derivative which is a variable is going to be the Q squared so in this particular case that would be 2Q and then therefore I could say basically voltage is equal to 100 Q E to the 20 T okay now what if what if someone comes and wants us to do the reverse of that much like we did over here we can take a derivative of both sides and say okay if you give me energy and you want voltage I'm going to start with this equation V is equal to DE over DT or DW, don't get confused, it's both the same thing. And the other confusion that might come, this E and this E are different. This is the energy, and this is the number 2.7 something. Okay, so so voltage is DE with respect to time. Uh, I'm sorry, V with respect to, see, I made the mistake here. So this is with respect to Q. I can take an integral of both sides. Again, remember, it's going to be with respect to Q. So energy is going to be integral from T starting time to T ending time of voltage with respect to Q. So that's sometimes you may have to use that depending on if they have given you energy or whatever. So, so far, we basically the two main equations you want to walk away from here 
is that voltage is the derivative of energy with respect to uh, charge, and then current is a um, um, derivative of charge with respect to time. Those are the two key elements that you want to get out of here. Um, and again, remembering that this is the, the, part, the energy with respect to Q, not T. In this, when you're dealing with these kind of situation in the electrical engineering, it's really important for you to get comfortable with these basic derivatives and, of course, uh, the integral related integrals to these ones. So, if you are has been away from uh, uh, from this field for a little bit, you may want to go ahead and refresh yourself on the mathematic basics of derivatives and basics of integral because we're going to use a little bit of that in the in this particular uh, environment. That gets us to the end of this section.